Hello everyone, this is Mr. P. Today we're going to talk about the simple present tense or the present simple, as you wish. We have three sentences right here. He is Canadian, he doesn't speak German. Do you understand? Okay, let's get down to it. So let's look at the timeline. The yellow star represents the present simple. So you can see it in the past, now, and in the future. But why is that? Well, I will explain in a minute. Let's first take a look at the forming the simple present or the present simple. We need, as you may know already, we need a helping verb, auxiliary verb, to make questions and negative sentences. The auxiliary verb in this case, or helping verb, is do, and for the third person singular, is does. Does, again, is for he, she, and it only. So, to make questions, we need the following formula. WH, question word. So that would be who, where, when, how, etc. If you have them, then HV for helping verb or auxiliary verb, then we need the subject, because it's a question, right? And then we need the verb. For example, do you eat meat? For the third person singular would be, does she work? So does she work, not do she work, okay? Does she work? What about a negative sentence. Well, for negative sentences, we need the subject, plus we need the helping verb or auxiliary verb, plus not, because it's negative, plus verb, the base of the verb, plus the object, if you have an object. For example, I do not eat meat. I don't or I do not eat meat. She does not or she doesn't work. She does not or she doesn't work. Pay close attention to the third person singular. Now, what happens with the positive sentences? And this is where it gets complicated a little. So, for I, you, we, and they, the pronouns, I mean, so that would be the subject, then we need a verb, the base of the verb, no change, plus the object, if you have an object. For example, I eat meat every Monday. So that's a time expression. I eat meat every Monday. So that's easy. How about um, the third person singular? Well, for the third person singular, we have subject, plus verb, plus s, plus object. She works, she works every day. She works every day. So we need to add an s to the verb, and that is work. So works. She works every weekday. I'm sorry, not every day. Every weekday. So, what happens with the verb to be? Well, the verb to be is uh, particular. Why? Because it follows um, another rule. Um, so, for example, for a, um, a positive sentence, I am um, a student. I am Canadian. I am a man. For the third person singular here, there is no change because the verb to be acts by itself. So you don't need anything else. You don't need another verb. He is a student. They are smart. So no change. What happens with a negative sentence? Well, you just write uh, the not right after the verb to be, like in my example. I am not, I am not, I'm not 
a student. He is not. He isn't Canadian. They are not. They aren't old. So, what about a question? Well, in a question, we just have to invert the subject and the verb to be in this case. So, are you Spanish? Are you Spanish? Is he old? Are they students? So, that's the present simple for the verb to be. Now, we uh, know that um, when you see time expressions and adverbs of time, um, they indicate the tense you need to use. In this case, I listed some of them. There are many others. So for time expressions, I listed every day, every weekend, in the morning, twice a month, four times a day, etc. The adverbs of time that you might uh, find in a sentence in the present simple tense are always, often, seldom, usually, never, etc. Now, this is the most important part of the, uh, the simple present tense explanation, and that is its uses. So, the first one, and that's why it's highlighted in yellow, is the most important part, the most important usage. So, everyday activities, routines and habits. So, number two, and changing emotions and wishes. General truths. Number four, giving instructions or directions. Number five, expressing fixed arrangements. And number six, telling a story. Now I'm going to give you um, examples for each. So don't worry if you didn't understand that. So for number one, everyday activities, and this is the most common one, I wrote, I study English every day. She studies English every day. Pay attention to the third person singular. So we have the verb that finishes with Y. So D, Y consonant plus Y. So I need to change that Y into I. So she studies English every day. The next example. They brush their teeth every morning. He brushes, E-S, his teeth every morning. And the last uh, example. We wake up late on weekends. He wakes up late on weekends. Okay, so you can see the third person singular again with the S, E, S, or I, E, S. There are different rules for, for that, so I will um, create another video to explain those rules. So let's go on. Number two, unchanging emotions or wishes. For example, I love dancing. That means you loved it yesterday, you love it now, and you will probably love it in the future. So, love dancing. He, hate, he likes watching movies. He likes watching movies. So, you can see the S in like. They hate studying. They hate studying. These are all emotions. There is another um, lesson on this um, topic. So... I will create another video for this. Now, number three, general truths. So, for example, the sun rises in the east. It doesn't rise in the west. It rises in the east. Water boils at 100 degrees. So, yeah, it boils at 100 degrees. The moon is a satellite, is a satellite. So the moon is a satellite. So this is always true. Number four, giving instructions or directions. So in this case, you're giving directions to someone. You walk for 200 meters, then you turn left. And we use the present simple or the simple present when we give instructions or directions. 
Number five, expressing fixed arrangements. So, for example, his father arrives tomorrow. This is a fixed arrangement. You know that his father will arrive tomorrow. So, we use the present simple. His father arrives tomorrow for sure. The train does not arrive until 10 p.m. This is a fixed arra arrangement. The train does not arrive until 10 p.m. Doesn't arrive until 10 p.m. So number six, when telling a story. Example, Mond shows John his collection of banned religious writings and reads aloud long passages from a 19th century Catholic theologian. Yes, so here we have a story. So you're reading a story and you can um, tell the story using the present simple. Yes. Okay, so now we have some exercise. I prepare this easy exercise for you to do. So we have to change these statements to questions. She has a lot of experience. So make that one into a question. Number two, he drives to his work. Number three, the new employee comes early. Number four, your co-worker talks to you. So pause the video and write your answers. Now, let's look at the key. Yes, does she have a lot of experience? A lot of people might confuse this with uh, um, has. No, if you have does, you must write the verb in the, at the face form of the verb. So, does she have a lot of experience? Number two, does he drive to work? That's right. Number three, does the new employee come early? And the last one, does your co-worker talk to you? Well, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you have any questions, please type them under this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. Like the video, please, if you liked it, and share it. So, have a great day. See you next time. Bye-bye.